Pastor Reginald Steele is the founder and senior pastor of Kingdom Church in Phoenix, Arizona. Kingdom Church is a ministry dedicated to the building of God's kingdom one family at a time. His teaching and preaching is both practical and powerful, encouraging men and women of God to live up to their full potential in Christ. Kingdom Church has grown exponentially since opening its doors in 2005, with over 10,000 members calling Kingdom their church home. Pastor Steele is a sought out speaker, leader, and mentor to many. He has been married to his high school sweetheart, Kelly Steele, for over 30 years, who stands beside him in ministry. Together, they have five adult children and four grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, Evangel Nation, please welcome Senior Pastor of Kingdom Church in Phoenix, Arizona, Pastor Reginald Steele. Amen. But we're going to go to Psalm 37 and 3. It says, it says Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brother saw that their father loved him more than all his, his, his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. So then Joseph dreamed and he told uh, his brothers and they hated him even more then verse 8 says, and his brother said to him, shall indeed uh, you reign over us and, or, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Drop down to verse 11. And the brothers, they envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. And then verse 23 says, so it came to pass. When Joseph had come to his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. And then they took and they cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty and there was no water in it. Then verse 26 says, and Judah said to his brothers, what should profit us there? We kill our brother and conceal his blood and then one would be done 27 says come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh and his brothers listen I want to preach a message this morning called I still see God look at your neighbor and say I still see God look at somebody else and tell them I still see God Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you. Have you already moved in worship? Now, for these next 30, 35 minutes, God, speak through me to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, I still see God. We see Joseph. Amen. He is going through, if you will. Amen. Because I believe before God can take you to greater heights in him, sometimes you got to be willing to go through setbacks. Amen. I always tell people, sometimes your setback is really a setup for your come up. Amen. I believe that it's necessary that we as God's children are okay with going through certain processes. Somebody say process. I believe that process, you can only, the only way you can be propelled is that you have to be willing to go through a, a process. Somebody say process one more time. Because God sometimes will have to put you through some different things so you can appreciate him. And that's why the word of God even declares that many are the affliction of the righteous, but he delivers us out of them all. We know delay does not mean deny, but sometimes I realize sometimes God will put a pause on your promise. Now, I believe in Hebrews 8 and 6 because it says that we have a better covenant established on better promises. I believe that it's the will of God for you and I to walk in the promises of God. But the key is this. Can you, can, can you continue to look to the hills even when you're not seeing God moving in situations? Even when you haven't got that job yet? Even when that business is at a standstill right now you still got to know that we serve a God that's in Ephesians 3 20 God that he's unto him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than we can even imagine or even think then it goes on it says according to the power that worketh in us in other words when you do your part God will do his part how many of you believe that at evangel that if you do your part 
he will do his part. Look at somebody and say, do your part. As you do your part, I believe that God will do his part. My, my wife, I asked her, Pastor uh, Otis, I said, listen, we're going to start this church. And I have five pastors that said that we're not going to give you nothing. And finally, I looked at my wife. I said, I need your whole paycheck. A little bit over $1,300 she gave me. She was a 911 operator for the Phoenix Police Department. Gave me her check. God took that check, multiplied. Here we are, 13, 19 years later, we've been able to take a city for Jesus. That's the kind of God that we serve, amen? But, but, but my point bringing that up is that she had to put her faith into motion. Because James 2.20 says faith without works is dead. Works in the Greek means action. In other words, there are certain things that we have to do in order to see the hand of God move. Even James 4 and 8 says that if we draw near to God, it says then he will draw near to us. Look at somebody and say, do your part. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you three things that I believe that's going to bless you on this morning. Number one is that you have to be confident that God has your best interests. Look at your neighbor and say, don't lose your confidence. Uh -huh. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 says, cast not away your confidence for it brings great recompense of reward. In other words, your reward is connected to your confidence. We see Joseph, he's going through. They strip him of his coat of many colors, but they could not strip the call that was on his life because the Bible says in Romans 11 and 29 that gifts and callings are without repentance. So they stripped him of his coat, but they could not strip the call that was on his life. They could not strip the confidence that was on the inside of him and I want to encourage you on this morning that regardless of what you're going through don't lose your confidence because God sent me all the way from Phoenix Arizona to encourage you on this morning that if you hold on to your confidence that God is about to blaze a trail in your life I declare this morning that eyes have not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him that word prepare that means that God is arranging your blessing if you believe that your miracle is already in motion if you know that breakthrough is coming to your house if you know you're about to step into your turnaround season I dare you to give God a shout in this place I know you might be going through, but I still see God. I know some of you walked in here and you got more bills than money, but I still see God. Somebody give God a shout. High five your neighbor and tell them I still see God. Even in my pit, I still see God. Even as I'm going through, I see God doing exceedingly abundantly. Somebody scream above more than I can imagine or even think. Somebody give God a shout in this place. Somebody say, I still see God. Joseph, if anybody should have lost their confidence, it should have been him. He's going through what I call friendly fire. Anybody been there? See, God can't even elevate you and push you into your next season until you go through some level of betrayal. See, we live in a time where some people just want everything handed to them. You got to be willing to go through the mud to get it. Everything I've gotten to this point, I had to go through the mud. That's why I love when Paul said in 2 Timothy uh, 4 and 7, he said, I fought a good fight. He said, I kept the faith. Do I got any faith people in the house this morning? I sense faith in the house. Because sometimes you can faith your way into some stuff. That's why Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and, and hearing by the word of God. Even Hebrews 4 and 2, it says that the word profited them nothing until they mixed it with faith. See, the word, you can hear this word all day. But if you don't mix it with faith, this word won't even work in your life. You got to mix it. 
with faith. So we see this faith man by the name of Joseph. He's stripped of his coat of, his, of many colors. He's, but he's never, they couldn't strip the call on, off of his life. They, they couldn't strip his, his confidence. He stood his ground. Then he goes from the pit. Then they, he sold to the Ishmaelites. God can't even take you into your next season until somebody sell you out. I'm grateful for all the people that sold me out. I'm thankful for all the people that said, you're going to run with that pastor still over there. And he got, he over there in a fleet market. Then we went from a fleet market to a cafeteria. And they really started laughing. Then we went from a cafeteria to a gym for three years, eight months, and two days. Pastor Lockett, we were the laughing stock of Phoenix. I said, they are mobile church. They ain't doing nothing. Oh, but God had a plan. That's why you can't listen to your enemies. Come on. Sometimes don't hate, congratulate. Don't hate, celebrate. I dare you to, as people are going up, when you celebrate them, the same God that blessed them will begin to bless you. Don't you be sticking your lip out and like, I can't believe God doing that in their life. If God did it for them, he will do it for you. Because last time I looked at Psalm 37 and 4, he said, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. If you believe that, somebody give God a shout. Look at somebody say, don't hate, congratulate. Don't hate, celebrate. Because the same God that blessed Joseph will bless you. The same God that blessed David will bless you. The same God that brought Daniel out of the lion's den, he will bring you out of your lion's den. The same God that blessed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he will bring you out of your fiery furnace. If I got anybody at Evangel that you know we serve a God that can bring you out, Somebody give God a shout in this place. Somebody scream, I still see God. I'm going through, Pastor, I know, but I still see God. Even though I was preaching to more chairs than people, I still saw God. Even though I had more bills than money, I still see God. See, y'all are hearing this morning from a convicted felon. <laughs> but 1 Corinthians 1 and 27 says that God will take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I was 24 years old, running from God. And here it is, Pastor. My dad is the bishop of the town, and I'm running from God. Got caught in an armed robbery, $160,000 bond. I'm in jail for three days. Oh, I found the Bible real quick. <laughs> I started reading that Bible, man of God. I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll serve you. Three seconds later, Pastor Lockett, they said, still, roll up. I said, wait a minute. I walk up there, and they said, yeah, you've been bonded out. They said, somebody put their house up for collateral and 16,000 cash. I walked out in that parking lot, Pastor. I looked at my dad and my mom. I said, I'm called. I'm ready to be a preacher. My dad looked at me. He said, you clean my bathroom on Monday and Thursdays at the church. And he said, when you turn 25, I'll let you preach your first message. And I preached a message when I was 25 years old called Roll with the Punches from 1 Peter 4 and 12. Thinking not strange concerning fiery trials. I've been rolling with God now for 27 years and seven months. Have not looked back, praise God. 
Because Romans 8, 28 says, and we know all things work together for the good to them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Do I got any people here this morning that you've made some mistakes in your past, but you didn't allow your mistake to define who you are? For the Bible says in Proverbs 24 and 16, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Do I got any people that's got some bad Bounce back on the inside of them. You was able to bounce back from that toxic relationship. You were able to bounce back from them drugs. Somebody give God a shout if you know you had some bounce back on the inside of you. You made the decision. I'm no longer going to live there because I know God is calling me to a greater place. Somebody give God a shout in this place. Look at somebody and tell them I still see God. I believe Joseph was confident that God had his best interests. I want you to know, Evangel, regardless of where you at, regardless of what season you in, you got to be confident that God has your best interest. Jeremiah 1 and 5, he said, I knew you before you even entered your mother's womb. Ain't no accidents in here. I was born out of fornication 52 years ago. My parents had me. My mama was 19. I'm 52. She's 72. She turned 72 last month. I said, I'm so glad you had me, though. I know y'all wasn't right, but all things. <laughs> all things. All things. And here I come with my three sisters. And then my dad looked at me when I was 11 years old, and he said, we leaving Arizona and moving to Louisiana. I said, for what? He said, I'm tired of moving this dope. He said, we move into Louisiana, I'm going to become a preacher. Now, at 11, I'm looking at this man like, how in the world you go from being a dope dealer to being a preacher? And we didn't sold the house. And my dad had a burgundy Fleetwood Cadillac, and my mama had a yellow Seville Cadillac. And we got a U-Haul truck, moved to Louisiana, and my dad enrolled in seminary. I'm 11 years old. And then at 14, he graduates from seminary. We move back to Arizona, and he starts a church. <laughs> I'm like, hey, look, this is crazy. <laughs> but God. So I started seeing God even in that. I said, but then I went through an identity crisis. Because you can grow up in the church and not know you the church. You grow up a PK and... You know, you, 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 your dad is a provider, a protector, but he's not present. And then he's telling everybody else that you're, they're kings and priests and queens and telling people they're fearfully and wonderfully made, but then you're feeling all alone. And then you get intoxicated with religion and not God but I'm grateful for my testimony because I had to go find my way. And sometimes we'll do that going in these streets. But Luke 15 and 17 says the prodigal son came to himself. I'm believing God that there's somebody in this room that the word of God is going to make you come to yourself. I'm here to tell you that God has not wrote you off. Hebrews 13 and 5, he said, I'll never leave you. He said, I'll never, somebody say never, never, forsake you. Send me all the way to Greensboro to tell you that God has your best interests. Yeah, I know we're living in some crazy times, but he has your best interests. Yeah, I know of all, everything about inflation. And I, I know that, that we're, they, they changed the name every 10 years. It was, first it was uh, recession, now it's inflation. Listen, we are in a famine. 
But Philippians 4, 19 says, I'll supply all, not some. Can I get a witness up in here? He'll supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Can I get a witness? He still owns a cattle on a thousand hill. Uh-huh. David said, I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never, somebody scream, never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I want his seed to give God a shout, even right. Look at somebody say, I'm his seed. A thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Look at somebody say, he has my best interests. Now give God a praise in this place if you believe that. Uh-huh. Look at somebody else and say, he has my best interests. I I'm very aware of what's going on, but he has my best interests. I'm confident that he's got my back. His track record is good with me. Can I get a witness up in here at Evangel? Look at somebody say, his track record is good with me. Mm-hmm. So number one, I still see God because I'm confident that he has my best interest. Number two, he always on time. Look at somebody say, he's always on time. Go to Psalm, uh, if they can put Psalm 46 and 10 up. Look what this says. Look what this says. Psalm 46 and, and, and 10. It, it says, be still and know that I'm God. There it is right there. That word be still means to be undisturbed and know that I am God. Even as I was trying to get to y'all city, I just got done doing a marriage retreat in Cabo, Mexico. I fly from Cabo to um, Charlotte. I get to Charlotte, and I'm supposed to get on the plane at 11.30 p.m. on Friday from Charlotte to get to Greensboro. They canceled the flight. The people jumped up, started kicking their suitcases and throwing jackets and cussing. I called my sister. I said, get me a hotel. Be still. And no. See, we got people that are aging, but not maturing. I'm going to say that one more time. We got people aging, but not maturing. Sometimes you got to learn how to just be still and wait on God's timing. Because delay does not mean denied. There might be times that things are on pause because see, sometimes you're going through what I call a character development season. Now check it out. I pastored in a fleet market, then a cafeteria, a gym for three years, eight months, two days. God finally gives us a 400 seater, then eventually a 600 seater. The building we have now can hold 1,300. We do a nine and we do an 11. We see a couple of, over a couple of thousand people every week, praise God. And we're doing that in Arizona. Ain't no Bible Belt. Ain't no black folk there. Amen. If it wasn't from Milwaukee, Chicago, Detroit, and Ohio, I wouldn't even have a church. So I'm very grateful and thankful that God is sending people from the Midwest, amen, and they're coming right. Our church is called Kingdom, praise God, amen. So I say all that to say that, that but I finally got the 1,300 seater, and what's interesting, God gave us 10 acres in the 10th year. In other words, God was saying, I'm going to give you an acre for every year that you've been faithful because I've watched you be still. I've watched you labor in the cafeteria. I've watched you labor in the gymnasium. I've watched you labor when you didn't even have a place to call home. When people left you because they didn't see the vision. And I watched you stand. I watched you be still. And still serve me. Even when you was leaking. Because there are times you can be pastoring and be leaking. But it was all part of my process. Somebody screamed process. So God gave me 10 acres in the 10th year because he couldn't give me the 10 acres in the 10th day. Because now your head starts swelling up. Then all of a sudden you start thinking it's you. 
And see, Romans 12 and 3 says to not think more highly of yourself than you ought to. If you ever want God to elevate you, you got to stay low. He said, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he said in due time, somebody say due time. He said, I will exalt you. I believe that there's somebody in this building even right now. You're up for elevation. You're up for promotion. God is about to upgrade your, upgrade your favor because he's a Luke 252 God that he will give you favor with God, that he will give you favor with man. Do I got anybody at Evangel that knows that we serve a God that will upgrade your favor? Somebody give God a favor praise. Look down your road. Tell them favor is coming your way. Uh Uh-huh. Don't quit right now because favor is coming your way. For the Bible says in Galatians 6 and 9, to not grow weary in well-doing for in due season. In due season, it says you will reap if you faint not. Somebody give God a shout in this place. Look at your neighbor and say, don't lose heart. Uh Uh-uh. You're right at the brink of your breakthrough. You're right at the brink of your blessing. God is getting ready to open up a door. If you know this is the year of the open door, somebody give God a shout in this place. Look at your neighbor say, trust his timing. Trust his timing. Trust his timing. He's always on time. I remember Pastor Lockett, we moved into that 1,300 seater. We needed $1.3 million. The contractor looked at me. He said, I need $1.3 million. And at the time, we had 2,300 in the bank. I said, my Lord. And see, the Reggie and me said, how are we going to do this? But the pastor still in me said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. God began to reveal to me. He said, everything you need is in the house. Look at your neighbor. Say, it's in the house. You got the woman, the widow woman. Husband dies. She looks at Elijah. And she said, my husband, your servant, you know he feared God. And she said, they're coming. The creditors are coming to get my sons. Back then, they didn't repo cards. They repo kids. Where's all my parents at? (laughs) They coming to get the kids. They didn't have no foreclosing going on and repossessions. They coming to get the children. And he looked at her. He said, what do you have in the house? She said, I have nothing but a jar of oil. How many of you know God can take your nothing and begin to multiply it? Matter of fact, I'm looking at a whole bunch of former nothings. And look what the Lord has done. We need to give him a praise. Look at somebody say, look at what the Lord has done. He didn't flip the script. Come on, somebody. You might not be where you want to be, but Philippians 1 and 6, he said a work that I begun. He said, I'll complete that thing. Come on, if you believe the word of God. Somebody scream, trust his timing. If we can just learn how to be confident that he has our best interests. If we can be confident that I'm just going to trust his timing. Pastor, we needed 1.3 million. They said, you need this in a year if we're going to renovate this place. We had $2,300 in the bank. I met with my top 100 givers and I began to walk them around the building and point out all the stuff that we needed to do. By the time I left that meeting, I had maybe $100,000. And then before it was all said and done, one lady came to me, and she was in my office, and she gave us $150,000 that next week. And then she said, how much more we need to get some of these other projects done? You know, James 4, 2 says, you have not. Because you ask not. I said, another 100000 by the time she gave to everything, it was a half a million dollars. And then she started parking by me. And the security came to me, Pastor, and said, 
She's parking by you. I said, she can park wherever <laughs> she want to park. They said, Pastor, she's sitting behind you now. I said, she can sit. I said, give her some M&Ms or offer her some, some you, you hungry? You need some Skittles? We, we got some coffee on God. Come on, somebody. Somebody scream, it's in the house. Pastor, what we thought was going to take a year, God did it in four months. In other words, we serve a God that if you learn how to trust his timing, he's about to fast track your blessing. He's about to fast track your miracle. If you know that we serve a God that can fast track your favor, somebody give God a favor praise. One more Look at somebody say, trust his timing. Trust his timing. You got to trust his timing. We were able to renovate our building. And since then, Pastor, we've raised over $4 million in the last nine years just renovating our building. And people are still joining over 500 just this year. And we're just in July. You know, that's the goodness of God. I'm a convicted felon with a learning disability. And people made fun of me because I got dyslexia, saying stuff backwards. I ain't said these scriptures backwards, but praise the Lord. Because 1 John 4 and 4 says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But the Bible says in Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in my mortal body. If you know that God lives on the inside of you, somebody give God a Holy Spirit praise. Look at somebody and say, he lives in me. Now give God a shout. He lives in me. He lives in me. He lives in you.